welcome to this uh, episode of Elven Home, which largely concentrates on the start of the work of building the fire station for Weathertop, uh, and also uh, a section on the scenic work that I've been doing around the station of Weathertop itself, which I said I'd be doing in the last video. Can I take this opportunity to thank everybody for their comments? I really do. I am very grateful for anyone that takes the time to comment. Had some really useful comments, um, uh, which has got me thinking. Um, uh, in particular, to Jeff Lizotte or Lizotti. You probably didn't get it right either time, Jeff. But thank you for the time you're taking to help me with the detailing around the fire station. He's uh, from the USA and he was a firefighter there and he's helping me there. And also to Andrew Johnson, who raised an issue about the dark areas from the lighting under the station canopy. Um, I'm having a think how I might overcome those. I think I might try and put some lights actually on the building as kind of wall lights. Uh, I hadn't noticed the dark areas until Andrew mentioned them, but uh, I can see that actually a bit more light there would work very well. So thanks very much for all your comments, and I'll talk to you again once uh, we go through. But now let me take you back a, a, a week or so ago when I was beginning the work on building uh, a prototype carcass for the fire station. Okay, well, it's time to start work on the fire station. Uh, what I'm going to try and do is keep each of these clips to no more than about five minutes and record regularly as I go along. Um, because in the process of just sticking four bits of card together, it's already firing off lots of thoughts in my head about how I'm going to design it. And the design is changing slightly um, the more I start thinking about how I'm going to reach the eventual uh, building. So to talk about the four bits that have been stuck together so far, um, which provides the centre section of the building. You'll remember I said I was going to do this in, uh, I thought the construction was essentially four pieces. This is the carcass onto which I will put something. Um, and I'll come back to where my thinking is going on that in a moment. So all I've done so far, the first piece that was cut out was to cut out the back. This is the back entrance, which has the most cutting out to be done uh, and the mo and most fiddly in a sense because of these thin window uh, posts. Um, and then obviously the two side pieces are exactly the same and the floor uh, here, which has the, which juts out because I have another piece of card which I've now managed to lose. Oh, there it is. Um, which needs the windows cutting out in it, which goes into here. And that then has the portal sitting in, in front. Just doing this little bit has already made me change my mind. I was originally going to have this entirely open in here. Um, but it's I think even though the windows I'm going to be using and I'll show you them they're on this sprue here so they'll need painting at some point it's these type that are going to be used you're not going to be able to see through very easily but you are going to be able to see through and if I leave this empty in here even without lighting in there and I think I would quite like to put some lighting in here um, you, you, it's just going to look straight through and I'm not going to be putting beds or anything inside because they're too damn fiddly to make it engage. Um, so I think the answer is that I've got to put something in here to break to as a, as walls. Um, one thing that's just going through my head is whether I can find some channeling, plastic channeling, which I could sink the uh, light into which would be deep enough to almost come to the roof, but allow the light then as an uplighter essentially to cascade left and right without being able to see right the way through. Um, the alternative is just to put some good plastic probably with a, uh, a, an LED between the two walls. So put a, a wall here, a wall here, stick my lamp there, probably also in with some protection around it to cut down light bleed. Uh, and also acting as an uplighter, um, just so there's a diffused light coming from the front and the back. Um, but I'll see, I'll see. I may divide it off even more so that, because it wouldn't, you could, for example, divide it off between here so that light only comes out from one end in this side and one end from there, even from one lamp right in the middle, just so that it doesn't look too odd. Um, 
The other thing I think is that because there is so much white in here, I'm going to have to do something by way of interior detail. Scale scenes do an interior 40s, 50s detail, which includes some wall coverings, um, which is this thing, which just happens to be just about the right width. So that, uh, that will do the walls. I might just paint the floor, I'm thinking about that. Um, but they do do floor coverings. The trouble is, that's the size, um, and you need to print off a whole page of A4 just to be able to cut one of these out. And I, you know, there's, I need about six or seven pages there, which would all be a bit of a waste of time. So I'll, I may um, I may return to Excel actually, because I think I could probably make something like that without too much trouble, uh, which would give me the right size. Uh, but it's interesting. Four pieces of card go together, and already the design is changing a bit. My original intention, this is the plastic card that I was going to use, and I've cut that piece off, thinking that I, that would sit right on the back here. And obviously, cutting out the windows and the portals. But the more I think about it, and look, I've gone back and looked at Acton Fire Station, which is, a, which is the model on which I'm using, the area, whilst all of this area here would be brick between the windows and the portals, in, at Acton all of these look more like a concrete and indeed, the posts between the windows at Acton look to be more concrete than brick. So I think it's possible that I may, or well, these, these two would be brick, but these would be concrete. I may have the brick coming there and possibly as a strip across the top, almost certainly as a strip across the top and on the two sides. But these and this part will be more a concrete look, which will be fun. So we'll see um, how that develops already, but it just shows you the value of, of um, this is meant to be a mock-up, but actually this is going together rather well. And I think this may well be the actual carcass. Uh, the only thing that would change my mind on that would be if I discovered that there was something I needed to have done before sticking these bits together, uh, which prevents me carrying on with the build. So that's now, I think, nearly six minutes actually, so I've run a minute over. That'll do for now, and I'll come back once I've done a bit more work. Okay, well, um, just quickly coming back, the mock-up has, has um, served its purpose uh, because it's shown me a couple of things. Um, there were a number of inaccuracies in my drawing, uh, which I need to correct. The posts between the windows, which I've cut out based on the drawing, um, are not wide enough to allow me to put the windows in. Because if you look at the windows that I'm using, which are, if I get, get on my hand, the hole that I've cut is right, 12 millimeters square, but it has a, a millimeter or so border all the way around, which means that the minimum these posts must be is three millimeters to allow two windows to sit side by side without one fouling over the other. Um, this is too thin. I, I mean obviously I can strengthen this but it just looks odd when you've got space either side and so the revised uh, version which is here, let me just pitch it up so you can see it, um, I've done very simplistically because all I'm looking for because the front and the back are essentially the same the three doors have been spaced more widely to give me a thicker piece of card here. Uh, the windows are now evenly spaced with a four millimeter gap between them and 12 millimeter portals. Um, actually, that hasn't greatly reduced the size either way because I'd cut them oddly and so thin. I'm not quite sure what I was doing there. The back will be exactly the same as this, only with, with um, it it's squared off at the top rather than the... the uh, arch and uh, I've slightly increased the amount of size at the top here to allow me to have a four millimeter lintel running across the top and I'll probably put a two millimeter continuous sill running underneath. I'll see um, whether it's continuous or separate but I think possibly a continuous one so it looks as though it comes straight out but we'll see how that goes. So um, back to the cutting mat to produce the next carcass, only this one I think I can have more confidence is actually the final carcass. But the main point of this short clip was really just to reinforce the point that making the mock-up allows you to test out whether your design works. 
uh, and is always time well spent. So I'll come back once I've completed the carcass other than putting on the um, front portal uh, and show you where we've got to by then. So I'll speak to you once I've completed that work. In the last video I spoke about the scenic work that I was going to be doing uh, along this side of the station, uh, completing the ballasting of the track from the tunnel mouth up to and just beyond the platform at the left end, uh, just up to just beyond where you can see those lights, uh, and also wanting to complete the scenic work uh, on this side and putting in the fencing, which will delineate uh, Long Bottom Terrace from the railway. Uh, and that I've now largely completed. At this point I will start showing uh, while I'm talking uh, some footage that I took using the gimbal because that allows me to get closer so you can see uh, what I've what I've been doing uh, and then uh, I'll just carry on talking whilst you're viewing that and I also ran the um, tra train cam down through to get a, a more ground level view of the work that's been done. Uh, essentially the ballasting was all completed using the ballast magic in the normal way and then I used the Javis asphalt which I've used before up and around um, Sharky's end to blend from the ballast till almost to the edge uh, and then put down some Javis earth and blended those two together and on the Javis earth I put some uh, static grass which is principally the um, summer mixture that I use that which, which is a mixture of one millimeter and two millimeter but I also put in about equal measures of Javis autumn static grass because I wanted this to have a browner feel to the um, uh, to the grass uh, and then uh, put the lump foliage in mixing the mid green and the dark green uh, then with using underbrush to stick underneath it so that the overall effect uh, gives me what I want uh, and if I zoom in now I think the clips will have finished by now um, I, I'm quite pleased with that uh, that outcome the fence is quite hard to see I hope you can see it but the fence I just painted it's a scale model scenery kit and that this is one and a half kits worth of fence uh, which includes a set of gates which is where there's the gap by the by the hut between the bushes um, that was painted with primer in, in you know spray painted with primer and then I used the humble the humbrel dark gray wash enamel wash which I dabbed over but not giving it a complete coat so that some of the light gray came through and then used the rust weathering powders to dry brush over the top of the, the wash to give me the streaks of rust that I've managed to get in and this is my first attempt at weathering uh, and I can see me getting a taste for it because I think it really does make a difference and that's then been sealed with a, a matte, matte varnish but I'm pleased with the outcome here it was what I had in mind it's, it's rather nice when you pull that off I've got a little bit of wall you can see there where the end of the wall of the platform there's a gap until it reaches the beginning of the um, fence uh, but that it's that's got to be constructed I've been too busy on the um, fire station to do that bit but now that that's in this fence is in place I'm going to put um, some strip styrene along the fence edge to provide a boundary uh, and then I can position long bottom terrace I've already tested it out and it'll all go quite well and that's when I shall go over the top of this um, uh, cobble paper uh, with the uh, cobbles that are available from the Metcalf kits. I've got more than enough to be able to have cobbles on each of the streets, Long Bottom Terrace and Bagshot Terrace, and also cobbles running down the centre of the alleyway that runs down the back of the two runs of back to back properties. Uh, and that's the scenic work that I'll start working on because I need to think a bit then on the houses about fixing them together. Um, two things, fixing them together in blocks, but them being able to be able to be lifted off because uh, if I just come around and point, up to this point here, I just managed to kick the camera, up to this point here is this board which may need to come off if I have to change any points. So I've got to fit the, the houses on in a way 
which allows me um, to remove them if necessary. Uh, but I think uh, the way I'm, I have in mind to do it, that will work quite well. The, the cobbles that will be on the far side of that going up to the fence will be stuck down permanently. But I think the things here will fit in, but will be able to be lifted off if I need to lift the board up. And the same will be true uh, of the station building, because that also sits uh, a little bit on the board that, that may need to be uh, taken out if, if I have a problem. So I'm quite pleased with that scenic work. I'll just come out a little bit. Um, and I, you know, it really is beginning to, to, to look, uh, look the piece. Um, what I'm going to do now is just go back to the last section on the uh, making of the fire station um, that you're going to get in this video. Uh, and then there'll be more in the next video. And after that, um, I'll just come back before uh, this episode ends. Um, update on the building of the fire station um, from the last time I thought I would roll on and have things done in great speed and that turned out not to be the case um, firstly because I've been doing some painting and inevitably you've got to wait whilst the paint dries uh, I've also slightly adjusted the size of the plastic card and I'll sh I can show you that now very quickly um, this is one of the two pieces that go on the front and that sits in there eventually uh, it's cut so that there is a bigger amount standing proud at the back here obviously there's a roof that's got to go on there which will take up about half a millimeter and what I will then do is put some um, some of this brick card on the inside whether I'll be able to match it exactly I don't know but I'm not too worried about that because once the roof is on and you'll be able to see this card standing proud there's going to be a parapet which is some very thin channel uh, small channel that I've got if I get hold of a piece and just show you that that there that sits on top of the wall which will also be painted in this stone color but what I don't want is to see a, a sort of flat red card inside so we're going to need to put at least a couple of courses that are visible on top of the roof um, and going up into the channel. Cutting out all these pieces has, has taken quite a bit. Um, it's quite fine to make sure it fits properly. I managed to, when I cut this piece originally, to cut it too thin. So it got sawn off and a new piece cut, which fits fine. The, at the front end, I've actually put the windows in there. You can see they're going in. Um, and the portal has been constructed so that that will sit over here eventually there we go that's how that's going to look so that's coming along okay um, and I'm starting to think about how I do the internal detailing here because I'm going to put an eye some strips of I-beam as roof supporting joints going probably three going across the floor that way um, but it's a bit cavernous in here so I'm, I'm beginning to think that if I put internal walls more or less flush with the door here um, perhaps in a bit because they need room when the when the engine comes in to be able to open the door and get out I suppose um, but that will also give me uh, a, a place where I can run the wires for the two lights that are going to be on the front and possibly any coming down um, that I, I put in here so that will give me a, um, a sort of void space and I can run the wires down through there and they won't be visible then internally. Uh, and that's one of the things that I'm learning here, that as I build this, there's so much design you have to think about. Um, in, in much the way I suppose an architect would have to do that. Um, at this point, I will put up a, a, a link. A number of people, when I did my last video, asked me to show them how I used Excel to produce the sheet that I'm going to be using as an internal um, tiled wall. And you'll recall in the last video, uh, the last video when I was talking about this, that I'm, I couldn't find something to use as the floor. That is produced in Excel. And there'll be a card coming up in screen now that will take you to a separate video 
um, where I show you how I do it. That's quite a, it, it's probably going to end up about 20 minutes, that video, um, and it may not be for everyone. So I'm going to do it using either the card that's visible now, or there's a link in the description below. Um, the video is going to be available on my channel, but it won't be published. Um, so you won't see it if you just go and try and search for it. You have to come at it through these links here. So that's pretty much um, where I've got to. The next thing for me to do now, I've got quite a bit of painting. I've started painting the doors, which are going to be this. I think they are going to stick with this brown colour. The brown, the brick and the um, that, that I think goes quite well together. It's the same sort of rough area. Um, so all the other doors need painting. And then I want to stick the brick card on. And then I'm going to go have a go at weathering uh, the brick. I've had a, an attempt at, at an off cut when I, this was an earlier version. Um, and that, that was using a gray wash, which didn't work very well. But this has worked much better, which was a very thin uh, mixture of um, acrylic white and a very small dab of orange, very wet and then covered over the brick let it dry a little bit and then wiped it off. And I think you can see that it's it's covered the courses really quite nicely and given a nice effect, effect to it. So I think that is what I'm going to do. And the only thing in my mind is, do I do that before I put it on the model or after? Um, before would make more sense, but it's whether I would get a consistent with the other stuff when it goes on, once the whole model's together. If I do it after I put the model together, there's a danger that some of that um, white paint might affect areas that I don't want it to do. So I'm just toying in my mind which um, would be better because mixing the paint, you can't be absolutely sure you'll get the same color every time. Uh, but that variation might not be a bad thing either. So uh, this is run at six minutes, so I've broken my rule of trying to keep it to five. But that's where we've got to with the model. I'll come back, the next time I come back will be with this carcass completed which I suspect will be in a few days time of actual working, but mere moments in the world of YouTube. Speak to you then. Well, that's just about it for this episode of Elven Home. I hope you've enjoyed watching the uh, build of the fire station and the scenic work. And if you've liked the video, please do give it a thumbs up. That's very helpful. Grateful to all my new subscribers, about 20 or 30, I think, since the last video. Uh, really good to uh, see you and welcome. And grateful to all my subscribers, of course. And if you haven't subscribed, well, please do hit the bell notification so you know when I'm uploading. Uh, and if you've got any comments, then please leave them below. Uh, and just a reminder that the link to the video on how I use Excel for um, brick papers and texture sheets um, is in the link below, in the descriptions below the video, if you didn't pick it up from the card in that section of the video. Uh, the next video is probably going to go up in three weeks' time, almost certainly three weeks' time, which will be just before Christmas, and also going to be a bit longer to work on the fire station. Uh, and that probably will be the last video for this year. Uh, and I'm quite busy over the next week in particular, so I don't want to uh, rush to do one in two weeks and not really have enough to put into it. So until we speak again, thanks very much for watching, and bye-bye. Mm -hmm.